when we need it. Since this is one of those unorthodox periods in time that nobody could have predicted anything, some special uh, uh, things have gone into place, including a, a tax penalty amnesty program. It is a program that will be lasting through December 17, and it allows any business uh, doing business within the city of Los Angeles that should, whether they're registered or, or not, um, to essentially uh, come clean and pay for any back taxes that they owe, um, including principal and interest, and in exchange, the city will waive all penalties associated with those delinquent accounts. During the time of the pandemic, when it's been really difficult for businesses that are struggling um, to uh, allow for an opportunity to um, reduce uh, that burden on them. You can submit an application online, you can um, call us, contact us, and our tax and permit enforcement uh, staff are happy to help. Do you, at the Office of Finance, offer a, a payment program of any kind? We do. Um, we So as part of the tax penalty amnesty program, we uh, offer an installment plan. Okay. And so our billing unit uh, would be able to structure a payment plan that works for both the taxpayer um, and also ensures that those taxes are collected uh, before the end of the fiscal year. Check out the best news bites from around town. It's time for City Beat. L.A. City Attorney Mike Fuhrer has announced a significant ruling in his ongoing lawsuits against three of the largest trucking companies that operate at the Port of L.A. The lawsuits allege that hundreds of drivers are purposefully being classified as independent contractors and not employees in order to evade providing benefits, paying minimum wage and appropriate taxes, and covering operating costs. To read more about the litigation, visit LACityAttorney.org. The Northern San Fernando Valley is getting a new walk-up COVID-19 testing supersite. The San Fernando Recreation Park in San Fernando will operate from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday with up to 3,000 people per day getting tested. To register for testing, visit corona-virus.la. Having been closed for nearly eight months because of COVID-19, Skateland Northridge, a mainstay for over 60 years, will soon transform into a 100-bed bridge housing center. The site will be operated by Hope of the Valley Rescue Mission, and the project is assisted by a $6 million loan from the City of Los Angeles. David and Mike Fleming, who own Skateland, hope to open early next year for a few days, if it's safe, for a last skate for fans. Turning skate land into hope land, a place where people who are homeless um, can come, they can find shelter, they can find case management, housing navigation, job skills on site. We would also have access to mental health services. I can't wait to share this story with you. As a dancer, I find these women so inspirational. We get to meet the Rolettes and learn more about their work to empower young women with disabilities through dance and a sense of community. Enjoy. Choreographer Martha Graham said, dance is the hidden language of the soul. Our guests today know that all too well. I'm so delighted to be joined by members of the dance team, the Rolettes, Connor Lundius and Catherine Elliott. So great to have you guys here. All right, straight off the bat, dance team, the Rolettes. What is it and what do you guys do? We are a dance team made up of women with disabilities, women in wheelchairs, and our main mission is to empower other women and girls with disabilities to live boundlessly and shift perspective through dance. America. Does it change how you feel about you and you know what you can and cannot do? I think it's an it's an indescribable feeling for sure and especially even just when we're all together the, as a team the seven of us we share a bond and share experiences that the general population doesn't understand. So it's you feel tremendously like at ease and comfortable when you're around people who are just like you. It's a bond like 
I've never experienced before and, and it really gives me a sense of belonging. We host quite a few events throughout the month virtually. We have virtual dance classes every week as well as a virtual girls night once a month and you can find information about that on our website, infootrelettsdance.com. It's really incredible to just see that there are so many other women out there that share the similar mindset and just wanna connect and make friends and share experiences. And we're reaching women from 10 different countries around the world, so it's incredible. This week, we also got the pleasure of chatting with Susan Burton from A New Way of Life Reentry Project. Susan's story is truly what I love most about the soul of Los Angeles, someone who made an incredible change in her life and now uses the lessons she learned to give a helping hand to others. After years of heartache and tragedy and substance abuse, Susan Burton turned her life around, but that wasn't enough. She turned back around and extended her hand to women just like her to help them as well. And a new way of life was born. So wonderful to have you. Susan Burton, a new way of life founder. You were incarcerated six times due yes. to things that you had done because of substance abuse, dealing with the pain that you were going through. I feel my, my incarceration was the um, effects of our society. Mm not being uh, willing or able to deal with um, uh, substance use, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, the drug problems in our, in our nation. Mm -hmm. It did become, uh, for me, um, a sort of hopeless cycle of in and out, in and out, in and out, and um, asking for help not knowing what type of help I needed. We have a kind, loving, comfortable environment for women to come to when they're released from prison. Uh, a place for them, a place for their children. But now we have um, social workers in place. We have a therapist on staff. We have uh, attorneys to help them to get their children back. Uh, we have a legal department. Uh, we have leadership development because I believe that when uh, what what all that the that the women have been through, you go through that, you have some leadership skills, Definitely. and so we support them to become leaders of their community, leaders of their household, leaders, uh, and and use their voice for good, use their vote for good. If someone wants to get more information, please uh, you can visit us at anewwayoflife.org. In our feature story, Joe Buscaino is a lifelong resident of Council District 15 and the vibe of the port communities runs deep in his DNA. I got to sit down with the council member at Dodger Stadium to talk about his work for the community in the time of a pandemic. Councilman Joe Buscaino, welcome to our show. Thanks, Rasha. Look at us. <laughs> here we are. What a dream, right? Amazing. So now much you, history. You, yeah, you've had your own history here. In 1992, the San Pedro High baseball team, which I was a part of, we played on this field and oh. won the champion, the city championship. Oh, this year, there's been so much that we've been through. So I want to talk about COVID first. It's something that's affected all of us across the Southland, and it continues to affect us. But your district already in April had rolled out some programs to help residents. Are those, could you tell us about those programs and if they're still in effect? Of course. Um, I'm proud that in, in my district, our team had to come together and, and find a way to feed the most vulnerable, our seniors and disabled residents. We launched a, um, a, a, a food program that helped stimulate the economy by helping, bring, helping support our small businesses, our restaurants. We fed um, a thousand people every week for seven weeks in a row, four days a week. And um, it was important for us, again, to help our, our local restaurants and, and, and feed those who needed us the most. We also um, worked with the private sector um, and were able to bring in half a million dollars and provide grocery cards um, and we distributed them throughout the district. But I'm also proud that uh, we were the first to um, house a hundred homeless individuals um, at the Sunrise Hotel in downtown San Pedro. It was what well, we know it today now as the Project Room Key. 
that allows homeless individuals to, to find shelter in a bed with wraparound services. Well, and I wanted to talk to you about the homeless issue here in Los Angeles. According to, to the Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority, the city experienced a 14% increase in the city, but your district experienced a decrease. What do you feel contributed to that? We saw a reduction in Council District 15, uh, and we're thankful. Uh, we're thankful for the residents in my district who said yes to solutions and um, I believe I was the first to have not one but three bridge home sites, Wilmington, San Pedro and Watts to move. They are now up and running. That's 300 souls that came from the sidewalks and into uh, a bridge home shelter. It seems in your mission too, you're very solution oriented. So the Housing Solutions Action Plan. Talk to me about this plan. What are some of the components? How soon do you think this plan will be implemented? Channel 35 is getting the exclusive All right. on, on our plan. So we've meet, been meeting with our We're neighbor. Here first. <laughs> <laughs> we've been meeting with our neighbor council um, representatives uh, in all corners of my district. And the housing plan is just that. We got to recognize the fact that city leaders, um, we are elected to take action leading with urgency, as I've often said. So um, this action plan is recognizing the fact that we have already hundreds of permit supportive housing units in my district, and we're, we're advancing more. We have about 2,000 that are already in the pipeline or have already been built that we're proud of. I have to say, though, before we end here, you are one of those few individuals through the most difficult times you are always smiling. And You've I think that it. just brings so much hope. I, I, I don't think I've ever been to an event, even in the most challenging times, you just bring this smile, which brings people hope. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. It's yeah, that, it's okay to smile. And you know, as much I'm Italian, born and raised, and we have, we're emotional. We love the hug and kiss. So I'm sending a virtual hug and a kiss to all of uh, the city of Los Angeles. Oh, thank you so much. It's Thanks been a pleasure having, having you here. Looking for the latest thing to do this week? Well, we've got you covered with virtual things to do. The Los Angeles County Museum of Art presents an exhibit by LA-based artist Alex Prager that satirizes a specific part of working life, the Opus Holiday Party. Created with sculptures, costumes, makeup, and props, experience these lifelike scenarios at LACMA. Visit Alex Prager Farewell, work holiday parties, now through January 3rd at the Smith Welcome Plaza, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. Visit lacma.org for details. Meditation is known as a healthy modality, so join longtime meditator Doug Frankel as he discusses the positive effects of meditation, particularly during the stressful holiday season. Even during normal circumstances, um, the holiday season can be really stressful, but you know, this year we, of course, have the added layer of stress with the COVID situation. So it's really important, I think, for people to take a few minutes every day if they can or whenever they can to just sit still and do some self-care. Happening Saturday, December 5th at 11 a.m. Email woodln at lapl.org for the Zoom link. Want to play a part in the design of the remodel of the historic Vision Theater in Lamert Park? Now's your chance. The top three design finalists for the Vision Theater Main Stage Curtain Competition are selected, and it's time to vote for the winner. The Department of Cultural Affairs Performing Arts Program is hosting the competition where the winner gets a $5,000 award. To vote, visit culturela.org. The voting concludes on December 7th, so vote today. And that's a look at some virtual things to do. Well, that's it for this edition. I'm Rasha Goel. From all of us here at LA This Week, thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. And don't forget, we're also on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. See you next time for more LA This Week.
Okay, good morning and welcome to the Los Angeles City Council. Today is Wednesday, December 2nd. I'm Nuri Martinez, the President of the City Council. Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Blumenfield. Blumenfield present. Bonin. Bonin present. Buscaino. Here. Cedillo. De Leon. Here. Harris Dawson. Caretz. Present. Krikorian. Here. Lee. Martinez. Present. O'Farrell. Present. Price. Present. Rodriguez. Here. Rue. Wesson. Wesson is here. 11 members present and a quorum, Madam President. Okay, um, first order of business. Approval of the minutes of Tuesday, December 1st. Mr. Koretz moves and Mr. O'Farrell seconds next. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Um, Ms. Rodriguez moves and Mr. Harris Dawson seconds next. Madam President, would council like all items to go forth with today? Without objection, that would be the order. Next. Uh, thank you, Madam President. There has been a request to continue item three to Wednesday, December 9th. Okay, without objection, that will be the order. Item one is an item notice for public hearing. Items two through 16 are items for which public hearings have been held. Items 17 through 31 are items for which public hearings have not been held. Items 32 through 37 are items scheduled for closed session for which public hearing has been held. 10 votes are required for consideration. Okay, members, those items are now before us. Do you wish to call any of these items special? Mr. O'Farrell? Madam President? Mr. O'Farrell? Uh, yes, Madam President, uh, I would like to continue item three on today's agenda to December the 8th, please. Yeah, that we just did that. That's been you continued. You did that? Okay. I thought I heard a different agenda item. Thank you. Thank you. And to confirm, it will be continued to Tuesday, December 8th. Okay, Mr. Blumenfield. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to call item 16 special for comment. 16 special for Mr. Blumenfield. Any others? Okay, Mr. Madam Go President. Mr. Gokorian. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, I'd like to call item one special for purposes of continuing the hearing date until December 8th. Okay, without objection, we'll continue that till December 8th. Thank you. Mr. Buscaino. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Nothing special. I'm, we're just hearing um, from the public that the volume is very low on the uh, the public side as they're trying to call in. Uh, if we can get IT to fix that, would be great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, we can get IT to fix the audio on the public comment side. Thank you, Mr. Buscaino. Okay, Madam Clerk, what items are available to vote on? We are able to vote on items 2 and 4 through 15. Okay, let's go ahead and vote on item 2 and items 4 through 15. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino. Aye. Cedillo. De Leon. Aye. Harris Dawson. Yes. Koretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Price. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rue. 
Wesson. Aye. 13 ayes. These items are adopted. Okay, at this time, let's go ahead and move on to um, public comment. Let me make sure that the audio has been fixed. Can you give me an update, please? Mr. Kukorian, do you, would you like to speak on items 33 through 37 on closed session? If not, we're going to go ahead and vote on those items. Uh, no, I think we can go ahead and vote on all of those matters in open session. Uh, Madam President, Budget and Finance considered all of them and uh, recommends approval of the City Attorney's recommendations. Okay, let's go ahead and prepare to vote on closed session items, Madam Clerk. It's, those are items 32 through 37. Go ahead and call the roll. Uh, thank you. If I may read into the record for item 32 in the case entitled Nasira Torres versus Justin Taylor Stewart in the city of Los Angeles, there is a recommendation to expend up to $120,000 in settlement. Item 33 in the case entitled Ketan Patel versus city of Los Angeles, there is a recommendation to expend up to $175,000 in settlement. For item 34, in the case entitled Browning Ferris Industries of California, Inc. versus City of Los Angeles et al., there is a recommendation to approve a settlement in favor of the city valued at 100000 For item 35, in the case entitled Silva Atwater versus City of Los Angeles, there is a recommendation to reject the settlement. For item 36, in the case entitled Christina Ripati versus City of Los Angeles, there is a recommendation to reject the settlement. And for item 37 in the case entitled Rosario Morales versus the City of Los Angeles, there is a recommendation to reject the settlement. And now to take the vote, Blumenfield? Blumenfield, aye. Bonin? Bonin, aye. Buscaino? Aye. Cedillo? Cedillo, aye. Madam Chair, uh, Madam President, Cedillo, aye. I'd like to also be added to the previous uh, roll calls. Give us just a second. Let's just finish this um, vote, and then we'll get to that. Go ahead and continue. De Leon. I'll make it easy. Aye. Harris Dawson. Yes. Coretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rodriguez? Aye. Rue? Wesson? Aye. 14 ayes. These items are adopted. Okay, um, Mr. Cedillo would like to be recorded as a yes vote for the previous items. Okay. And for the record, those previous items are 2, 4 through 15, and Mr. Cedillo will be recorded as an I. So that would be 14 I's. Thank you, Thank Madam you. President. Thank you. Madam President, sorry. Yes, Mr. Buscaino. Um, I'd like to change my vote on item 36 as a no vote, though it, I don't think it's going to impact the, uh, the outcome. What item is that? 36, ma'am. Okay, let's go ahead and record his no vote for Mr. Buscaino on item 36. Thank you. Just want to confirm from ITA that we can go ahead and move on to public comment now. Thank you. Let's go ahead and, Madam Clerk, can you please read the call in information and follow by our city attorney? Thank you. As indicated on today's agenda, members of the public wishing to offer public comment should call 669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 160-535-8466 and then press pound. Then press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star 9 to request to speak. Let me repeat. Call 669-254-5252. 5252 and use meeting ID number 160-535-8466 and then press pound. 
Then press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. So, to members of the public calling in, when it's your turn to speak, please state which of the agenda items you'd like to speak on. You have one minute per item to speak, up to three minutes total, and one minute for general pub public comment if you wish. Please start with the items before providing general public comment. We'll tell you when your time's up. When speaking on the agenda items, you must be on topic. Our goal is to get through as many speakers as we can. If you're not speaking on topic, or if you can't tell, we can't tell whether you're speaking on topic, you'll get one brief warning from me or the president. If you do not immediately get clearly on topic or again straight off topic, the president will cut you off and you'll forfeit the rest of your speaking time and we'll move on to the next speaker. We'll take 30 minutes total of public comment. The items that are open for public comment are items 17 through 31 only. That's 17 through 31. Number 38 is a special agenda item, which we'll deal with later. Finally, for members of the public calling in to speak, as soon as you hear someone address you by providing the last four minutes digits of your phone number or other identifying information if you're calling in on a block number, that means you're live in the council meeting. Please immediately press star six to unmute yourself. That's star six so that you can tell us which items you want to speak on. We understand that you might be listening on your computer or other device. Please keep one ear to the phone so that you hear us address you um, and you can immediately press star six. Also turn down the volume on your other devices because there's a slight time delay and we might get feedback as well. Thank you, Madam President, and we're ready to take public comment. Caller with the phone number ending in 0899, please press star six. Hi, uh, this is Stacey Dawson Stearns calling. I'd like to speak on 18 and 19, please. Sure, so you have two minutes for the items. Please go ahead. Okay, thanks. All right, so we didn't get a say about the Olympics, so we're gonna have our say now. Um, the Olympics are a policing and a displacement nightmare and we never got a say. We're sitting here in a situation where we're in, we're in 2020, we've got a massive pandemic, people are gonna be evicted. I don't know what it's gonna look like in 28, but I know that the last thing that we're gonna want is 3,000 cops on the street trying to sweep us away. We don't need um, Casey Wasserman uh, to be making big bucks off of our suffering. The Olympics are a lie. They are founded on um, complete white supremacist ideals. There's a legacy of abuse that is unacknowledged. Um, Mayor Garcetti refuses to acknowledge sexual harassment in his own office, much less in the Olympics, he hasn't acknowledged it. Kayser Wasserman has made a living off of covering up sexual assault cases, and it's all in the name of sports. Let's just table that, guys. I'm against it all, everybody's against it all. And to our council members, especially one of our newer ones, this is an opportunity to acknowledge that the problems that we're having now and the things that we're crying for, like um, humanitarian aid for our unhoused neighbors, this is tied into it. We don't want to green light um, cops working with the Department of Homeland Security. We don't. We don't want to turn into a police state. We're turning things around. Um, I yield the rest of my time. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 7719, please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Thank you. <clears throat> it's Eric Previn and I'll speak on the available items and the general public comment. Sure, I so I would like you to have Mr. Previn, you have three minutes for items 17 through 31, followed by one minute for general public comment. Please begin. Yeah, I just had a quick question because the telecast didn't come on for item 32 and 33. We did hear that item 34 was a $100,000 victory for the city over Browning Ferris, longtime rep by Englander Canavi and Allen and Ar Arnie Berghoff. So that's probably a friendly fire lawsuit regarding the Sunshine Canyon landfill, but can you give me the terms on 32 and 33? We'll do that later, Mr. Previn. I don't have it at my fingertips right now. It's very disappointing. All right, let's talk about the Olympics for a moment. Swim LA 1.0 and 2.0 each cost about $2 million plus. So we've reduced the $160 million that was set aside by the Olympic Committee for the Parks and Rec Group to teach kids swimming. We're down to $155 million to use through 2028. Uh, you know, good work 
giant asterisk because of course we want kids to be able to swim but the former caller the prior caller talked about the priorities that are being adjusted to make the Olympics work for the city of Los Angeles when the city of Los Angeles has really onboarded some significant problems now Mayor Garcetti who's been angling to become the Secretary of Transportation uh, and Phil Washington will do the picking there so probably won't be Garcetti because you don't pick your boss uh, that doesn't look very good he's working for the Biden group but you know the the city of Los Angeles and the metro have bent over backwards to get things in order for more stadium style people moving so that we can fill these stadiums full of affluent people from around the world who flood our area for three weeks in 2028 that obviously is not a very smart civic priority even though we all love i love i can say this i didn't agree 100 percent. i like the idea of the olympics and of competition at the highest level if it were fair and square but the ioc has been such a um corrupted organization i mean you know the world cup all these big sporting franchises thanks to not just casey wasserman to these businessmen who've rolled along in this direction are you know sort of strangling our city from meaningful uh, population-based development. We don't want to become a place that cleans the beds of people from other places and just does menial labor to bring in these folks who spend money here. We also want to have meaningful jobs. When I see that we are, have an innovative partnership with NBC Universal, I tip my hat to Mr. Rue as he heads off and I say, is that really our goal to be one of the big media players? And all of these council members who approved uh, these deals are going to be basically termed out by the time 2028 comes. So they'll be, you know, hanging out on rooftop bars that they orchestrated to have built. And the regular folk will simply starve. And I'm worried about it. I'm really worried about it. I wish that the metro was focusing on restoring bus ridership so that folks could actually get around our. I wish that there was a meaningful transit system, you know, as opposed to these disgusting overages that come one after the other under the auspices of these very folks, the fiscally conservative Paul Cornelosa, you know, bang his little fist on the desk and go, we are screwed. Well, we are screwed. And to continue to, you know, dress it up with a swim lesson is not going to get us through. So I, I just wish I had a, a better outcome. All these vacations of property fall below. This is where you understand city property is sort of gifted because it's not at market value. They do pay at 10,000 or the one that caught my attention in Buscaino's district was item number 28, a 96. So, thank you, Mr. Previn. And for the record, sorry that the audio had gone out before. The settlement for number 32 was $120,000 and the settlement for number 33 was 175,000. Caller with the phone number ending in 6068, please press star six. Caller with the phone number ending in 6068, please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hi, yes, this is Richie Serjanko. I'd like to speak on item 18, 19, and general public comment, please. Sure, so you have two minutes for the items followed by one minute for general public comment. Yeah, 18 and 19 are both related to the LA 28 uh, Olympics. Um, I, I wonder, you know, everything that the people of Los Angeles have been calling in city council about over the past year, you know, things such as housing and defund the police and we need more housing. Well, the Olympics only cause more gentrification and they, they only cause uh, a growth of a homeless population. It's been proven um, and every single location that uh, the Olympics have been held in. So LA is not going to be any different. So by not taking a stand on the Olympics, you know, you're essentially saying it's okay that gentrification and tens of thousands of people are going to be out on the streets in 2028. And I mean, y you won't be in office or you won't be in city council then, so it doesn't really matter to you, but that's what's going to happen. And it's happened everywhere. And LA is not going to be different. So, I mean, you can keep staring it in the face and be like, ah, oh, we're not going to do anything about it, but, you know, that, this is what's coming. So you're going to step up and, and do something about it, or 
And, you know, when people are calling to say defund the police, that means we want less police. We, we, we don't want the police on our streets anymore. The Olympics are only going to bring more police to L.A. 3,000 more police when people are saying we want less police. Like, and that's in 2028. Like, and, and the defund the police movement in Los Angeles led by BLM, you know, has been proven effective and has only gained more momentum. So what do you think is going to happen in a year, two years, five years, and eight years? Uh, you know, we don't want the fucking police. And the Olympics only mean more policing. And so that's just something like, I, you know, I wonder what, what's going on over there because it, it's already been said there's going to be, be more police. And we're saying less police. How can you justify that by bringing the... By bringing the so you have general public comment, if you wish, Speaker general public comment um i mean i think it was pretty despicable for anyone that voted for joe bucket's uh, item 33 yesterday to continue sweeps in san pedro joe i heard you correct my pronunciation of it yesterday i'm still going to come tear down that flag off your house um but i think all the city council members that voted in favor uh, of item 33 yesterday like now, so you all are okay with going in CDC guidelines for sweeps? And, uh, you know, we're in a pandemic. This is when people need shelter. We need to fill the rooms agreed to on, under Project Room Key. You know, this is, this is something that I, I can't believe is, is really going on. Like, we don't have enough housing for people in Los Angeles that you want to continue sweeps in the middle of the pandemic. And we, when, no, when we know one of the most important things to keeping people safe from COVID is shelter. And how can the unshelter shelter in place? Thank you, Speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 4208, please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Yeah, I'd like to speak on item 18 and general public comment. Sure, you have one minute for each. Please go ahead. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting that, you know, we're still talking about the Olympics. And, you know, some of you aren't going to be around the horseshoe at that point. Very few of you, actually. But we're going to be looking back at those photos of when you had your oversized scissors and golden shovels and all that kind of crap. And we're going to see a bunch of people that are now indicted or in jail, um, like Mitch Englander. Like let's say we are, maybe Councilmember Wesson. I, I don't know. Um, we just always think of the IOC as a very corrupt, flawed organization, and the response has been, "Oh, LA's done it before, and you know we're, we'll do it." Right. You're not. Go you've proven that you are the epitome of the swamp. Um, there's no way to do this right here, and we shouldn't be wasting money on this shit. Um, I, I, I want to just address something that came up earlier, and that was the issue purportedly of low volume. Let me be clear. There was no audio other than the hold music until you started to read off the closed session item. This is something we've complained about for months, and now only when we got Big Patty from the harbor complaining to Joey Buckets do we get you to take it mildly seriously. Um, you know, we can look across the board at how you've handled public comment, how the council president has failed to establish any regular rules here. Um, months ago, you added this whole star six thing when our four numbers get called out. That's nowhere on the fucking agenda. So it just makes no sense the way you've handled this. There's no veiled attempt to even uphold the Brown Act. Um, it's all pretty pathetic. And, and on that note, um, Councilmember Rue, I've been trying to lay off you a little bit since I know you're a little bruised up, but bro, you haven't filed any of your door hangers, flyers, or lit mailers, anything that you sent out in the last two weeks of the campaign. Caller with the phone number ending in 8420, please press star six. Caller with the phone number ending in 8420, please press star six. Caller with the phone number ending in 8420, please press star six.
Caller with a phone number ending in 1148, please press star six. Caller with the phone number ending in 1148, please press star six. Caller with the phone number ending in 5245, please press star six. Caller with the phone number ending in 5245, please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. I'd like to speak on all available items and general public comment. Sure, so you have three minutes for items 17 through 31 and one minute for general public comment. Please begin. Yeah, yes, thank you. Um, you deliberately um, muted, uh, did not let me in yesterday. You have a lawsuit coming for that. And you did the same thing, you muted me today. But uh, thank goodness I have two phones. Apologize to Ms. Autry Martinez. Item number 20, uh, you have $2 million going for a William Sh uh, Winter Shelter Program. Uh, what $2 million for, you're taking from COVID-19 funds. When you gave $600,000 to the LAPD yesterday, $200,000 to the LAPD yesterday, item 30 and 27, this is disgusting. Disgusting. This isn't even human. Two million dollars for the winter shelter program. That's all you think of, of, of people dying out on the street. You gave seven hundred fifty thousand dollar grant last two last Wednesday to the LAPD. We're watching and adding these things up. You people are criminal. You give two million dollars to Dawson over the last eighteen months for luxury office moves, but $2 million for the winter shelter program. Joey Bucket, I don't know why people call him that. I call him Boos Kyanus. You're an ass. Want to throw people out on the street. You have your PSA announcements going on before the, the council meetings, but they mean nothing. People are looking, they're watching. Jackie Lacey thought she could go ahead and just do whatever the damn hell she wanted. She's out. Look at Wesson appointed Martinez, thought he was going to get the Hispanic vote, but you're out. People are watching. Rue, you're out. Two million dollars, and you're given ten, tens of millions. Krikorian uh, withdrew item number one, 12 million dollars for some improvement of educational facility. This is a vote trading. All votes public are yes votes, vote swaps. It's illegal. It guarantees all city councilmen like Boos Kainas yesterday and his sweeps of the homeless, just shoot them, shoot them. Why don't we? We'll be voted yes. So can if we get, can number we get one, back on the, the items what? more? Can we get back on the items, Speaker? Yeah, item number uh, 18, uh, the Olympics. Yes, more gentrification. Uh, especially coming from um, uh, our communities, the black community, with Dawson, who is the gentrifier in chief, you're not putting any money into the people. Okay. You the can people go into, are sick and tired. Of you can go into general public comment if you want, Speaker. Thank you, sir. Um, let's take a roll call. Um, Garcetti's deputy mayor indicted. I don't know nothing about that. Wesson's chief of staff indicted. Wesson, I don't know anything about that. Englander, councilman indicted. John Lee with his, get it wet, John Lee, with his backdating checks with Englander on his way to indictment. Jose Wizar indicted. Price investigated. You people are, a, are just the lowest of the low. And the people are understanding it. People, the only way to get these people out is to vote them all out. Bonnie was the only decent person yesterday voted no on Boos Kainos kicking the 
the shelter, sh kicking the homeless into the street. You are. Caller with the phone number ending in 6162, please press star six. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Uh, my name is Jim Alger. I'd like to speak on public comment, uh, sure. general public comment. Sure, you have a minute. Uh, please go ahead. If I could take one second to say hello to uh, Nuri Martinez. It's been a while since we worked together in the Senate office and congratulations. I haven't spoken to her since she took her position here. But my reason for the call today is I'm responding to public comments made by a city council member publicly calling for the closure of Whiteman Airport. Whiteman Airport was built on a farm in 1946. Los Angeles allowed the land to be developed, eventually coming right up to the fence line, and now complains that an aircraft crashed near homes. Whiteman is one of the last homes for over 500 small aircraft, averaging over 300 flight operations a day. These aircraft have been pushed from Van Nuys and Burbank Airport jet traffic. Whiteman is home to flight school, aircraft maintenance, and dozens of certified flight instructors serving the underprivileged communities of the San Fernando Valley. Whiteman is home to Senior Squadron 35, Cadet Squadron 137, and Los Angeles County Group 1 of the Civil Air Patrol, an auxiliary department of the United States Air Force that serves the city and county of Los Angeles for everything from locating you, downed speaker. aircraft to assistance after an earthquake. Sadly, it was a Civil Air Patrol aircraft that actually crashed on final approach. Thank you, Speaker. If Sir, can you please state your name one more time? I'm sorry? Can you please state your name one more time? It was Jim Alger, and if I could have 10 more seconds, I just want to read my final paragraph. Sorry, sir, your time is up. Caller with the phone number ending in 1125, please state your name. Caller with the phone number starting with ending with 1125, please press star six. Caller with the phone number ending in 1125, please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, which items would you like to speak on? On uh, items number 18, 19, and uh, general public comment, please. Okay, so you have two minutes for the items, followed by one minute for general public comment. Please begin. Hi, my name is Johnny. I'm a volunteer uh, with No Olympics LA. We're a coalition of several dozen groups in the area. Um, we've been opposing the Olympics for years at this point. You've heard our voices many times. Um, maybe not some of the newer members. Uh, to reiterate what basically every caller has said, the Olympics present a huge policing and displacement nightmare that none of you are publicly reckoning with. We're watching, we're listening, uh, we're monitoring everything going on. We know the threats, we know the Super Bowl is around the corner as well, and the World Cup. We know that Airbnb is now 10 years partners with the IOC, leading through the completion of LA 2028. We know what that means, right? And you all know what that means. Um, so what we need you all to do is to start asking those questions yesterday, right? These tough questions like, where is the money going? Why was there no public particip participation to begin with? Why were the polls that you all relied so heavily on by Fernando Guerra at LMU treated as credible when he was a registered lobbyist for Olympic developers, right? right? So we need you today, right now, to start talking about this because it's literally your fucking job, okay? And what I'm gonna need from everyone to do as well is to start talking to us and start engaging with us because this is not going away. It's actually just gonna magnify um, intensely as, as the days and weeks and years go along, and we'll be there for every single second of it. So uh, with that said, uh, you know, I'd like to leave you with um, a story that happened in 2018 um, when, m most, when we were paying a ton of attention to this bid, when um, the 180 survivors of Larry Nassar, you know, an Olympic doctor, specifically called out Eric Garcetti and LA 28 bid, bid chief Casey Wasserman for their lack of accountability with that issue. How dare you talk about youth sports in our city 
when we all know that the IOC and the Olympic shell systems and youth sports systems are insanely abusive. And you can go on you to general not public mentioned that once. if you wish, Speaker. You can go to general okay. public if you want. Okay. Uh, so generally speaking, um, this is an issue that will come up and be threaded through every single choice and every single vote as things go through, from transit to disability to acceptability to housing, homelessness, policing, security, um, and all the money that's attached to that. And you're going to today, you're planning on punting. Um, the, the project was the project was rubber stamped over th three and a half years ago, and the bid was around for two to three years before that. It's been basically six years of this process. And none of you all have made a single concrete decision about anything or been transparent in any, in any facet, right? So that's the grace period or whatever. But like right now, you have to start talking about it today, right? That's it. I yield my time. Thank you, Speaker. Caller with a phone number ending in 3841. Please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Santa Gomez. I'd like to speak on items 18, 19, and public comment. Sure. So you have two minutes for the items, followed by one minute for general public comment. Please begin. Cool. So I actually want to start off with a little history lesson because it seems like y'all are completely out of touch with the type of impact that an Olympic plan can have in L.A., and I'm reading from a book that was published in the Minnesota Press by Dr. Damien M. Sojourner. And it goes like this. The 1984 Olympic Games in Los Angeles, as a pivotal point in the development of heavily militarized LAPD and the intensification of brutal punitive enclosure upon black communities against the backdrop of the Cold War and the conjured threat of the USS are in conjunction with the events that unfolded at the 1972 Munich Games, LA city officials and the LAPD successfully, successfully lobbied the federal government to provide funding to expand the LAPD workforce and attain some of the most sophisticated military weaponry on the face of the planet. However, after the games were over, the LAPD did not move to return its arsenal or scale back its labor force. The threat was merely changed from an outside terrorist force to a domestic force, the hyper-violent, drug-peddling, gun-toting, black criminal. I bring this up because the Olympics would create a policing and displacement nightmare. Shame on y'all for thinking that we need, as being on Tangva land, that we need the Olympics in the middle of a pandemic. Herb, although you lost your re-election, I want to remind you that when Melina Abdullah endorsed you, and you use your political advice, uh, advertising with that endorse, endorsement. You are still part of this community and you will be held responsible if you don't speak up on Olympics. Harris Dawson, stop using community policing for policing. Stop using the images of black children getting along with police officers in South Central when they are part of the reason why communities so have you been can, You can go to general life. public comment if you want, Speaker. I yield my time. Okay, thank you. Caller with the phone number ending in 7226, please press star six. Hello. Please, please state Hello. your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name's uh, Kenny Barnyard. Uh, I'm gonna speak on 1819 and public comment, please. So you have two minutes for the items followed by one minute for public general public comment. Please begin. Great, uh, yeah, I'd just like to do a little signal boost for the last caller. Um, anyone that's interested in how uh, the 1984 LA Olympics uh, directly caused the 1992 LA riots um, can Google LA Olympics riots. It's a, an article in the nation. Um, pretty much talks about all the things people are talking about today. Um, but yeah, I also wanted to talk about um, 
how we're going to, to pay for this um, when it eventually goes over budget. The Tokyo Olympics are about uh, 30 to $40 billion over budget. Um, and I was just wondering how we're going to pay for that when that happens. Um, I imagine that the taxpayers will be on the hook and not um, Casey Wasserman or his billionaire buddies. Um, Casey Wasserman's worth about 400 million bucks. I make 40K a year. So um, if he wants to throw in some of his personal money, um, I would rather not pay for this nightmare. Uh, Angelinos need housing now. We don't need the Olympics. We don't need to be thinking about how we're going to be spending money for rich people to come in here and have a three week uh, vacation. Poor people in LA are dying every day because they don't have housing. So spending money on these reduced swimming lessons will do nothing to confront this housing crisis. LA is evicting people from vacant taxpayer owned homes the day before Thanksgiving. So don't talk about caring about kids or reduced swimming lessons when cops are dragging 10 year old children out into the cold before the holidays. We don't want 3,000 more cops in our city over policing poor people, black people and brown Angelinos so that rich folks can come here and have a good time for three weeks. Um, also wanna lift up that there is so much abuse of all with the Olympics. The, uh, all of the children, the abused, sexually abused children, um, the survivors of Larry Nasser, uh, called on Los Angeles to put this partnership on hold. Why are we not listening to people that have been harmed by this event that you're trying so to You can go on to general public comment if you wish, no Speaker. No one but rich people in Los Angeles. Uh, so Google uh, LA Olympics riots at the Nation article. I yield my time. Thank you, Speaker. Okay, members, that concludes general public comment and public comment on this um, today's agenda. So we're going to go ahead and uh, just prepare to vote, Madam Clerk, on items 17 through 31. Thank go you. Go ahead and call the roll. Blumenfield? Blumenfield, aye. Bonin? Bonin, aye. Buscaino? Aye. Cedillo? Aye. De Leon? Aye. Harris Dawson. Coretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rue. Aye. Wesson? Uh, back to you, Harris Dawson? Yes. And Wesson? Wesson? Uh, Council Member Wesson? Uh -huh. Fifteen eyes. These items are adopted. Okay, let's move on to item sixteen. This item was called special by Mr. Blumenfield for comments. Thank you, Madam Chair or Madam President. Um, so, this item instructs Lacers and the city departments to build a robust divestment framework and a plan to encourage our pension system to begin stepping away from fossil fuels. The evidence is really clear right now that fossil fuel investments pose a serious risk to our portfolio. And at the moment, we've got over $150 million invested into these companies. I introduced this measure uh, over a year ago. And since then, we have seen the hottest day on record in my district. It was uh, over 120 degrees. We've seen a nearly endless barrage of wildfires, destructive hurricanes throughout this country. And climate change isn't waiting around for us to get our ducks in a row on divestment. The time is now to come up with a robust plan to identify our riskiest assets and make a solid plan to move away from these investments and toward a more fiscally and environmentally responsible investment uh, opportunity. Oil shares are plummeting and we know the fossil, the fossil fuel industry is not gonna be here forever. In a prudent, fiscally responsible way, this motion will encourage Lacers to create a divestment framework similar to what they're already doing in San Francisco, which has been an operation successfully for five years and has moved aggressively to divest from the worst actors 
and to establish a watch list of the riskiest investments. Now, I've worked with some amazing local environmental groups that have been instrumental in rallying support for this important measure, uh, including the San Fernando Valley chapter of 350.org, Climate Reality, the Temple Isaiah Green Team, Climate Resolve, the Neighborhood Council Sustainability Alliance, and many, many more groups. There is a lot of momentum. I also wanna thank my staff, especially James Conlon, who worked really hard on this issue. And just to thank everyone who has been writing in and calling uh, on this issue for a long time. Colleagues, uh, I encourage an I vote on this measure. Thank you. Mr. Koretz. Thank you, and I, I wanted to first thank uh, Mr. Blumenfield for uh, bringing this forward. Uh, it is desperately needed. We know this is one of the significant steps that we can take against climate change. Um, and we know that these are terrible investments that are getting worse by the day. Um, so the time is now to get out of them. Uh, the fact is we're leading the effort to try to make these bad investments by reducing uh, the usage of, of oil and gas and moving towards alternative energy sources that don't provide uh, greenhouse gases. And so it doesn't make sense for us to be investing in them as they go downhill and as we try to be a national leader in making them go downhill. So I think at this point for the city of Los Angeles, this is truly a no brainer. It's something we absolutely must do. And uh, I would join in asking for your I vote. Okay, members, let's prepare to vote on item number 16. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino. Aye. Cedillo. Cedillo, aye. De Leon. Aye. Harris Dawson. Yes. Coretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rue. Aye. Wesson. Aye. 15 ayes. This matter is adopted. Okay, Madam Clerk, at this time, let's go ahead and recess our regular meeting and begin our special meeting. Please call the roll. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, present. Buscaino. Here. Cedillo. Cedillo, aye. De Leon. De Leon. Aye. Harris Dawson. Yes. Coretz. Present. Krikorian. Here. Lee. Present. Martinez. Present. O'Farrell. Present. Price. Present. Rodriguez. Here. Rue. Here. Wesson. Ever present. <laughs> Thank you. 15 members present and a quorum, Madam President. Okay, let's that move on to, we have um, item 38. Yes, thank you. Would council like uh, the item on today's special agenda to go forth with? Yeah, without objection. Thank you. That item 38 is an item for which a public hearing has been held. We'll, um, we should take public comment in any case, however. Okay, let's go ahead and open the phone lines. Uh, let me just read out the information one more time. So, as indicated on the agenda, members of the public wishing to offer public comment on item 38 only should call 669-254-5252. That's 669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 160-535-8466. That's 160-535-8466 and then press pound and press pound again when prompted for participant ID. ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. Once you hear someone identify you by the last four digits of your phone number or other identi identifying information, if you're calling in a, using a block number, 
That means you're the person ready to speak. Please press star six right away to unmute yourself. Um, the only item that you can speak on is item 38. Uh, not anything else, not general public comment. Um, and we'll tell you when your time's up and we'll take up to 10 minutes of public comment on this if we have that many speakers. Caller with the phone number ending in 5540, please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Please state your name and speak on item 38. on behalf of the applicant for the promenade 2035 project please go ahead this is cindy starrett from latham on behalf of the applicant for the promenade 30, 2035 project which will transform an existing shopping center into a mixed-use sustainable project consistent with the vision of the warner center 2035 specific plan with the leadership of council member bloomingfield we voluntarily included 10 percent affordable housing we appreciated the unanimous approval by the City Planning Commission and Plum's unanimous recommendation that the CEQA appeal should be denied and the supplemental EIR and staff's recommendations to deny the CEQA appeals should be adopted. This is an important project for the district. It has hundreds of supporters and we look forward as we plan for the recovery from COVID-19 to wonderful projects like this for the future, and we ask that the council approve the staff recommendation, the plum recommendation, the commission recommendation, and move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 1983, please press star six. Please state your name and speak on uh, item this, 38. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning. My name is Stuart Waldman. I'm president of the Valley Industry and Commerce Association, VICA. VICA fully supports the Westfield Promenade Project as it will help elevate the economic vitality and stability of the San Fernando Valley and its residents at a time when it is desperately needed. With almost 2 million people, we deserve our own entertainment center instead of always having to drive to downtown or the west side for events. Repurposing the old Promenade Mall into an innovative new green urban center is a smart idea that will generate thousands of new jobs for years to come and offer much needed amenities in the Warner Center. The project's significant boost to the local economy and to city tax revenues that support public services will be critical to the future as we work on recovering from the current health and economic crisis. Over 1,000 residential units is also a positive step that will help address the city's current housing crisis. We urge you to allow this important project to move forward today. Thank you, Speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 8420, please press star six. Caller with the phone number ending in 8420, please press star six. Please state your name and speak on item 38. Hi, my name is Astrid Coda. Um, I was wondering if I can get an extra minute since I got dropped earlier. N no, I, I, I didn't. My, my number was called and I pressed star six and, um, and then I got hung up on, so. So do you, do you wanna speak on item 38? Yeah, but can I also just get one extra minute? No, you just get one minute on item 38. So please, please begin with your one minute now. All right, so I'm opposing um, this appeal for redeveloping the existing uh, Westfield Promenade Shopping Center located um, <clears throat> within the Warner Center specific plan. So um, you want to expand this thing, 28-story office tower proposing 5,655 parking spaces. Who is this for? That's my question. Who is this going to benefit? Um, who is going to lose? I'm guessing that the 5% very low-income housing units, um, that they're going to be 
Um, they're going to be affected by this. Who's going to be affected by this? Who is this for? Um, I completely oppose it. We shouldn't be tearing down more land and building more um, buildings or parking spaces. We need to be um, either creating more green spaces or providing housing for people that need it. Um, I yield my time. Thank you, Speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 8670, please press star six. Please state your name and speak on item 38. Hi, my name is Luis Porras. I'm the business agent with Local 761. I'm a proud member of Plumbers Union 761. Approving the Westfield Promenade Project sends a strong message that Los Angeles may be hurting right now, but we need to rebuild and come back strong. This project represents a billion dollar investment in our future and will create more than 19,000 jobs. That's correct, 19,000 jobs. We need this. They follow the rules, working with the community and are a longtime member of this community. We need this project and we need to send a message to our other longtime businesses in the city to invest and start planning for our recovery. Let's send a hopeful message to every worker out there that this is a temporary setback and our great city will come back strong. Council, thank you for your time. Thank you, Speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 1148, please press star six. Please state your name and speak on item number 38. Uh, yes, item number 38. I'm, I'm surprised you didn't mute me again. Item number 38 is a huge development. Um, it's, it's going to pass because LA City Council, it doesn't matter what proposal, doesn't matter how bad it is, it's going to pass because LA City Council vote trades or vote swaps, 100% yes votes. This project is huge and the public should scrutinize it in very, very close detail um, it doesn't matter what, uh, how much gentrification or how much damaging it is to the public. You're, you're going to overlook it unless we police you. Just like the uh, Crenshaw Mall, Dawson uh, does not support the community and the community-owned investment. He's going to the Trump ownership on that one. And I su suspect the, the same thing is happening with this one. If it does bring good jobs, wonderful, wonderful for the union. Thank you, but Speaker. the displacement of anybody should be uh, 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 turned down. One thing I'm surprised, this does not have a Thank dollar you, amount. Caller with the phone number ending in 0899, please press star six. Please state your name on speak on item number 38. Uh, hi, this is Stacey Dustin Stern speaking on 38. I just want to list up here um, some stuff that really gets bypassed here when we're talking about very low income units. I want to point out that all low income units, all affordable housing units expire, those designations expire after 50 years. So we're looking at the future of our city and we're like, oh great, let's put 5% very low income housing units. Maybe a generation here out there maybe two until they're put out on the street again and um, i also want to i want to lift up that workforce housing is a is a industry term it's not it's not protected by law anywhere and so this is a developer practice i also want to lift up the fact that your your constant decisions to kind of grant these like these sort of um overriding considerations or like waivers of having to go through um, applications for variances that you do on almost every big ass development because you have great relationships with lobbyists that work for these LLCs. You do this and then that just bypasses any kind of public hearing. So someone's like, oh yeah, Thank by the you, way, speaker. we're just gonna like. Caller with the phone number ending in 7719, please press star six. Please state your name Thank and speak you. on item number 38. Thank you, it's Eric Previn from Studio City, and this is obviously the Westwood LLC uh, project, Westwood uh, Prominent LLC, Westfield. 
Now, obviously, a giant development out in Blumenfield's district uh, has a lot of appeal to some of the locals. But I, I thought that Fauble was exceptionally rude to the prior speaker, who was making a very good point that by bending over backwards and doing, you know, small modifications to get folks to sign off, like the 5% are very affordable. Let's remember also that there are 572 hotel rooms embedded in this project. So there comes the transit occupancy tax waiver. Pretty soon you'll see John Wickham walking around with little file where he gives away money to these folks who are setting up giant vacuum cleaners of the public who are going out of business generally is money into these giant centers. I love that Stuart Waldman called it a new green urban center. By new green, he means extremely expensive because Garcetti and others can use the desire to get this going to make them put in certain things. But putting a giant building in a Thank beautiful... Thank you, Speaker. Okay, that concludes public comment on this item. Yes. So go ahead and prepare to vote on item 38. Oh, Madam Speaker, may I speak on this? Oh, I didn't see your hand. There you go. Sorry, I did, might have been. Did you? Quick, put it up. Who, who's speaking? Uh, this okay. is Bob Blumenfield. I didn't. Your hand's not up, sir. That's why I didn't recognize who's speaking. Go oh, ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I apologize. It was supposed to be up. It's up now. <laughs> I can see it. Uh, great, man. Okay. Um, this is a really important project uh, for the city and for my district. Uh, as I said in the Plum hearing, uh, I didn't support the appeal of the EIR. The EIR supplemental to the e is supplemental to the existing EIR for the Warner Center specific plan. And I really believe that the environmental analysis of the Promenade 2035 plan is more than adequate. I also want to point out that this is the very first project in the Warner Center to include affordable units. Uh, it is being built on what was formerly a, uh, a shopping mall that has basically been a ghost for a number of years. It's a dead shopping mall and a, and a huge parking lot. And it is being transformed into something special, uh, housing, green areas, um, and an entertainment complex. It is, it is transformative. The affordable units that the project has established is also creating a standard for Warner Center projects in the future. And it's a laudable action. I'm grateful to URW. They, they heard my call for diversity in housing. And it was a, after only after a lot of hard work and community involvement. But the project now includes 5% very low income housing, uh, a voluntary 5%, or not, it's built into the program, another 5% of what's workforce housing. But uh, contrary to what the caller said, it's defined what workforce housing is. It's 120% AMI. Uh, and 5% stakeholder housing, which is also defined in the agreement in terms of folks who live in the Warner Center or work, work in the Warner Center, I'm sorry, so they will work there and live there. So that's 15% overall. It, it's a game changer in the community. Not only is it affordable housing, but it's going to be great jobs, including thousands of skilled labor jobs, construction jobs, and it includes an entertainment complex that will be the gem of the community and enable this live, work, play environment that was envisioned in the Water Center plan, and that all of us talk about as the future of green planning to be able to, to have a, a mini city that you can be within this larger city where you can get your culture and entertainment and jobs and work all in a smaller area for less of a carbon footprint. When it was before Plum, we had so many callers. It was like a who's who of the West San Fernando Valley. Uh, the project now has tremendous support. The developers did a really good job. They worked with the community for years, ironed out the concerns that were there. It's gone through extensive public hearings. It is now a win-win project that will be great for the community and great for this city. I also want to acknowledge uh, Elva O'Donnell, who's a case planner who is retiring and has been very instrumental on this project and has done a great job moving it forward. So with that, colleagues, uh, I, I enthusiastically ask for your aye vote. Okay, thank you, Mr. Blumenfield. Let's go ahead and prepare to vote on this item. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino. Aye. Cedillo. Stelion. Mm. Aye. Harris Dawson. Yes. Coretz. 
Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rodriguez. Enthusiastic, aye. Rue. Aye. Wesson. Aye. 14 ayes. This item is adopted. Okay, what's before us? Um, let's go ahead and adjourn our special meeting and go into our regular meeting. And then you can tell me what's next. Thank you. Would you like for me to call the roll to reconvene the regular meeting? Yes, please. Blumenfield. Blumenfield present. Bonin. Bonin present. Buscaino. Here. Cedillo. De Leon. Here. Harris Dawson. Yes. Coretz. Present. Krikorian. Here. Lee. Present. Martinez. Present. O'Farrell. Present. Price. Present. Rodriguez. Here. Rue. Here. Wesson. Here. 14 members present and a quorum, Madam Chair. Okay, what's before us? Madam President, there are four verbal motions for uh, the council. Okay, go ahead and start with the first one. First is a commendatory resolution introduced by Council Member Harris Dawson relative to honoring and always remembering the legacy of Aristeo Thomas. Is there a second to this commendatory resolution? Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Price, next. Next is a motion introduced by Council Member Krikorian and Price and seconded by Council Member Lee referred to the Information Technology and General Services Committee relative to instructing the Department of General Services to develop a plan identifying opportunities that are presented to reduce or eliminate lease space due to reduction in personnel or increase telecommuting or remote operations. I just need to verify, Mr. Price, you are a co-author, and Mr. Lee, you're the second? Confirm. Okay, thank you. Yes. Please. Thank you. Next. Next is a motion introduced by Council Member Krikorian and Council Member Harris Dawson, and second by Council Member Lee, referred to the Information Technology and General Services Committee relative to instructing the Information Technology Agency in concert with the City Administrative Officer to coordinate with IT staff throughout city departments to review contracts, services, and systems in active use throughout the city and identify where there may be duplications or redundancies and identify opportunities to consolidate contracts and services within ITA to realize savings and operational efficiencies. Uh, Mr. Harris Dawson, can I get a confirmation? You're a co author, and Mr. Lee, you're a second? Confirmed. Thank you. Confirmed. Next. The final verbal is a motion introduced by Councilmember Kokorian, referred to the Public Safety Committee relative to instructing the fire department to report on the details of implementing the false fire alarm program that includes full cost recovery of sworn responses and required staff resources for successful program administration. Is there a second to this motion? Second. Second by Ms. Rodriguez. 
And that is all, Madam President. Okay, we have six members on the queue. Mr. Rue? President, um, I move that $1,500 from the AB 1290 fund number 53P, account number 281204, CD4 Redevelopment Project services be transferred appropriated to the cultural affairs fund number 480-30 revenue source 5301 reimbursement from other funds for a community holiday event hosted at the Barnesville gallery in december 2019. Sir, i sir, further sir. move that the department of cultural affairs be authorized to make any technical correct corrections or clarifications as necessary to the above instructions in order to effectuate the intent of this motion is there a second 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 so I can't, couldn't hear who, who seconded it. Mr. Price? Thank you. Correct, second. Oh, Mr. Kurtz. Um, Mr. Wu, do you have any others? That's it. Thank you. Mr. Bonin? Thank you, Madam President. Uh, just one. Uh, I therefore move that the City Council, in accordance with LAMC Section 62.132, approve the street banner program promoting Venice Boulevard in downtown Mar Vista as a City of Los Angeles non-event street banner program for the period of November 2020 through November 2022, and the Council approve the content of the street banner design uh, as attached to the documents provided to the clerk. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Buscaino. Mr. Thank Buscaino. You. Thank you, Madam President. Two motions and a commendatory resolution. First motion um, is regards to property at 9515 Compton Avenue in Watts for a multifamily affordable housing development. I move that the permittee be required to properly repair and resurface the street cut area in accordance with the Bureau of Engineering requirements and standards. And upon completion of the work, the repaired street cut be inspected by the Bureau of Contract Administration to maximize the longevity of the street. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Blumenfield. Next, Mr. Buscaino. Thank you. Um, I move that the Bureau of Engineering be authorized to issue a revocable permit to Charles Wheeler, subject to satisfaction of the conditions for issuing such permit to allow for the insulation. Uh -oh. Frozen. 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 Hold on for just a second, Mr. Buscaino. You froze. Um, can we get ATA to fix this? Mr. Buscain, I need you to start again because um, we had an inner internet connection issue. So okay. go ahead and start the second one one more time. Sure, sure. Hold on, I'm still on. The, the move that the Bureau of Engineering be authorized to um, issue a revocable permit to Charles Wheeler, subject to satisfaction of the conditions for issuing such permit to allow for the installation of fencing within the public right of way at 25322 South McCoy Avenue as part of the McCoy 255 Community Housing Development. A second? Please. Second. Second. Thank you. Second by Mr. Gakorian. And lastly, a commendatory resolution for our friend, Dr. Richard Vladovic, after um, 50 plus years serving in the educational field that has been marked by selflessness and commitment, wherein he is led by example with kindness and immeasurable skill. So let it be resolved that by the adoption of this resolution, the LA City Council hereby commends Dr. Richard A. Vladovic for his exceptional service to the residents of Los Angeles, congratulates him on his professional accomplishments and extends best wishes for a well-deserved retirement. Correct, second. Thank you. There's, there's a second by Mr. Cor I'm sorry, Mr. Correct. Is that That's the it. last one, Mr. Buscaino? That's it. Thank you, Madam President Member. Thank you. Ms. Rodriguez? Yes, thank you. I have a uh, resolution that reads, now therefore be it resolved with the concurrence of the mayor that the adoption of this resolution, the City of Los Angeles includes in its 2019-2020 federal legislative program opposition to any administrative op uh, action by the Trump administration to privatize Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and support for any legislative or administrative action that provides for debt forgiveness and restructuring loan programs for lending, institution, uh, lending institutions to provide relief for homeowners and commercial real estate loans. 
Second. Second by Mr. Blinfield. Any others, Ms. Rodriguez? That's it. Mr. Koretz? Oh, thank you, Madam Chair and Madam President. Um, the moving clause of uh, my motion is, I therefore move that the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment, the city attorney, and any other relevant department recognize an extended elected term of office for current Westside Neighborhood Council board members and that their in-person selection town hall be delayed until it is safe to do so in Los Angeles no later than March 2022. Second. Second by Mr. Blumenfield. Yes. Mr. Correct, do you have another, another motion? No, that's it. Thank okay. you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, today, along with Councilmember uh, Blumenfield, a commendatory resolution for someone who's been a good friend to the West Valley and to the entire city. Uh, he's retiring, Mr. Ken Ferusman, that many of you know, is retiring, and we just like to send him off with this. Uh, Ken didn't always give you the, the answer you wanted, but he always gave you an, the, uh, he always got back to you with that answer. So, therefore, be it resolved that by adoption of this resolution, the Los Angeles City Council does hereby commend and recognize Ken Ferusman for his 31 years of dedicated and exemplary public service to the people of Los Angeles and extend to him and his family wishes for good health and happiness as he embarks on his well-earned retirement. And this is seconded by Council uh, Member uh, Rodriguez. Confirmed. Thank you. I confirm my Ms. Rodriguez. I can confirm my co-presentation, Blumenfield. And Mr. Blumenfield. Thank you. Any others, Mr. Lee? No, Madam President. Mr. Blumenfield? Right, thank you. This motion deals with the, the, the raft or the proliferation of illegal casinos and gambling that has been going on for years, but has been uh, particularly bad in my district and in the, in the San Fernando Valley of late. There's been a lot of high profile uh, busts of some of these uh, illegal establishments. And the, uh, it is asking for a report back. Uh, the moving clause specifically says, I therefore move that the city council instruct the Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety in consultation with the Department of City Planning Los Angeles Department of Water and Power and the Los Angeles Police Department to report back with 60, within 60 days on tools that could be adopted to deter and civilly punish operation, the operators of illegal gambling establishments, including but not limited to LAD WP shutoffs, certificate of occupancy, holds of revocations, permit pro prohibitions on the same or related properties, fines, and scorched earth penalties. Second. It's been seconded by Ms. Rodriguez. Any others, Mr. Blumenfield? That's it, thank you. Okay, thank you. See no other members on the queue. Madam Clerk, what's next? Council has motions for posting and referral. The motions Hold. will be, excuse me. Oh, I'm so sorry. Mr. Cedillo uh, seems, Mr. Cedillo, you have your virtual hand up? Yes, uh, for closing memory. I'm sorry, say that, so say that one more time. Yes, I'm waiting to close the memory. Okay. Adjourn and those, those are those are posted and referred. And Thank you, Madam Clerk. Members, are there any announcements? Okay, Mr. Rue, is this an announcement or a journey motion? Announcement, ma'am. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Rue. Thank you, Madam President. And this presentation is bittersweet. Uh, well, I'm incredibly happy for Daryl Powell, that many of you know, uh, and want to send them off with well wishes uh, we can uh, that we can offer. You know, the city today is losing a dedicated public ser servant and a genuinely kind person who put his heart into his work as well as uh, with, to all the friendships he had with his colleagues. Daryl started with the city service in February 1984 with the city administrative office as a junior administrative assistant. In February 1986, Daryl began working in the office of the legislative analyst where he served the majority of his time with the city. Daryl performed a number of important duties, including, including analyzing state and federal legislation and preparing motions and reports for the city council. He also managed the CLA's desk during city council meetings, prepared the staff briefing manuals for new members of the city council, developed the city's policy on naming of communities, and was a member of the mayor's affirmative action task force and the League of California Cities Welfare Reform Task Force. 
Most importantly, he has consistently displayed a professional, kind, calm, and friendly demeanor that should be a model for all those who work for our city. At the end of this year, Daryl is retiring from the city after over 35 years of faithful and dedicated service. And I would like to wish Daryl, his wife of over 30 years, Gail, and their children, Daryl, Austin, and Ashley, all the best. And Daryl, I wish we could have done this in person. Here's your proclamation. Um, but from the bottom of my heart, I wish to thank you and commend you for your years of exemplary service to the city and the people of Los Angeles. We wish you success and happiness in all of your future endeavors. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Mr. Rue. Any other announcements, members? Adjourning motions, Mr. Cedillo? Yes, Madam Chair, let me, uh, I'd like to adjourn in uh, the memory of one of the greatest Bruins, one of the greatest uh, Americans, one of the greatest Olympians in the history of our nation. Uh, Rayford Johnson attended UCLA because he was inspired by the uh, presence of Ralph Brunch, uh, the Nobel Peace winner of Jackie Robinson. Uh, he had, was student body president at UCLA. He ran track and field, had historic battles with uh, C.K. Yang. Uh, he was the decathlon champion. Uh, he, son of a Texas farm worker who grew up in the Central Valley in Kingston, California. He is one of the most extraordinary figures uh, in sports, but also in broadcasting and in uh, politics uh, of our time. He was a very diplomatic man, very um, gentle man, and it was an honor uh, this year, or not this year, recently, uh, to meet him at, uh, at the City Hall Chambers and to speak to him. Um, he was going to, quote, lobby me for support for the Olympics in Los Angeles, which is um, kind of uh, a joke in a sense because I obviously support uh, the Olympics here in Los Angeles. And so we were able to meet and spend some time in the back and then through some of our many events supporting the Olympics, um, I got to see him and know him uh, slightly. Just an extraordinary human being. Uh, many will also recall that he was the person who, uh, when Senator Robert Kennedy was assassinated, was the person who took the gun away from Siran Siran. Um, so just a uh, extraordinary, extraordinary um, human being, uh, Olympian, uh, Bruin, Angelino, uh, and someone that we should all um, aspire to maintain his type of class and dignity uh, and his disposition for life. So I thank you. Madam President, can I add? Yes, Mr. Rue. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam President. And thank you, Mr. Cedillo. Um, I just heard of uh, Ray first passing as well. Um, you know, he was a friend. Um, he was somebody that I got to meet uh, during my tenure. Um, he was a resident of Sherman Oaks, um, and he, we also served on an alumni board at UCLA together, the Order of the Blue Shield. And you know, he was such a kind um, and gentle soul who, um, you know, despite everything, all of his accomplishments that Mr. Cedillo presented, he was such a true human being, and he was such, uh, he was like a next door neighbor, a next door neighbor you want to live next door to. And um, he was so friendly. Uh, he was always welcoming. Um, you know, um, he, he was a pleasure to see throughout the years and meet. Um, and he will be sorely missed. And um, and our city, our um, Council District Four, our city, our nation, and the world um, lost one of our heroes. Thank you, Mr. Steele. Thank you, Mr. And Madam President. Uh, Mr. Wesson. If I could join Mr. Cedillo in uh, this adjourning motion. And Mr. Rue and, and Gilbert have said phenomenal things about Ray Burke. He was just a special, kind uh, human being. And Gilbert and I had the pleasure uh, to meet him. Uh, it, it is a great loss. You know, I, I sometimes when people pass on, I, 
I think about the times in which they grew up and it was so, it's challenging today. I just wonder how challenging and uh, the difficulties that he had to deal with uh, back then, things that he had to overcome. He could be, could have been so mean and bitter towards the system and he was like the exact uh, opposite. So he will be sorely missed and it's appropriate that um, this council adjourn in the memory of a, uh, a phenomenal dude. So I join uh, Mr. Cedillo in, in this journey. Madam President. Yes, yes, Mr. Kokorian. I have other members on the queue, by the way. Um, go ahead, Mr. Kokorian. I just wanted to, I didn't know if they were uh, going to speak about Rafer Johnson or other adjournments, I apologize. Um, but I just wanted to add uh, that in addition to the point that Mr. Wesson just made, uh, this is uh, this was a man who also could have been very full of himself. Uh, in 1960, he won the gold medal in the decathlon and was named the greatest athlete in the world. And that's what the Olympic gold medalist in the decathlon is, is proclaimed. And he could have um, been a, a man of um, you know who, who was who was. Um, yeah, there you go. Had a had a big head about that, but he wasn't. He was a man of incredible humility and caring and compassion, who was involved in so many of our community events in the valley uh, and elsewhere, uh, and maybe most notably was one of the nation's real champions of the Special Olympics, and um, gave so oh. much uh, to those uh, young people participating in the Special Olympics. And I, I just, um, I'm so sorry to hear of his passing. He was a, a great fixture in this city. And um, I think it's appropriate that uh, Mr. Cedillo adjourned this met meeting in particular in honor of Rafer Johnson, the same meeting in which we are awarding funding from the Olympics to help uplift young people uh, in uh, neighborhoods who would otherwise be deprived of recreational activities, but for this Olympic uh, uh, agreement. And it's appropriate that this is the meeting that we recognize a great Olympic champion and a great uh, uh, contributor to lifting up people in need throughout our city and throughout the country. Mr. Price. I want to join my colleagues uh, in uh, just acknowledging the tremendous um, role that uh, that he played, Brooke Johnson played, uh, you know, not just as an athlete, but as a, as a human and as a humanitarian, uh, certainly uh, known all over the world for what he did in athletics. Uh, but he was always a, a universal hero and a, and a black hero, he was well respected in the black community. Uh, whenever he uh, uh, was present, wherever he expressed himself, whenever he was involved, uh, always working to assist those less able to, to fend for themselves. And so he was a real, a real Olympic champion, uh, as Mr. Kikorian pointed out, from the 60s on. And it was a role he, he wore well, uh, very humble, very unassuming, uh, but always willing to help. And so he will be sorely missed. Uh, throughout the world and especially in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Price. Um, Mr. Cedillo, we, we can make this an all member adjournment in honor of Mr. Rafer Johnson. So thank you. Uh, Mr. O'Farrell? Yes, Madam President. Yeah, I had my hand up because I also wanted to weigh in oh, I'm on, so sorry. on uh, Mr. Everybody Rafer Everybody starts to weigh in uh, and I'm trying to go by order of virtual hands, oh, but I oh, apologize yeah, no, to you. It's, go it's ahead, all good. sir. Uh, I, I think it's really important that we all um, adjourn in his memory. And I, I want to thank Mr. Cedillo for leaning in and um, honoring him today uh, since we won't meet again. And I think it's important that we uh, state with one unified voice that he, Rayford Johnson represented the best of all of us as Angelinos. He also represented 
the very best of what the Olympic spirit uh, is all about, faster, higher, stronger. He was a booster of the Olympics. He was a booster of Los Angeles. Um, I doubt the 84 Olympics would have even been in Los Angeles, certainly wouldn't have been as successful as they were without his direct input, without his direct collaboration uh, with Mayor Tom Bradley and his, his work and his belief in the Olympic movement. Uh, and he, he, he is so many firsts. He broke the decathlon world record in 1955, going into the Melbourne Olympics, where he was expected to win the gold medal then while in college, and if not for a knee injury, where he still managed to win the silver medal. Then he comes back, he goes back to UCLA, becomes the, the, uh, the, the class president at UCLA, works in a hamburger joint after winning a silver medal, silver medal in the Olympics. Then he goes to Rome in 1960 and wins the gold. Uh, his life story is a story of perseverance. Uh, it's a story of living an inspired life, making the most of incredible difficulty, suffering the effects of racism and, and transcending all of that. And emerging as a champion in the world. One story that I love, and I see that the LA Times published this in their obituary, is that he went to Moscow uh, during his sports career, I think it was before the Olympics, and competed with then uh, a, a, a decathlon champion, Kuznetsov, a, a, a Russian. And he, he competed in Moscow against Kuznetsov. And when he won, the fans stormed the stadium and Rayford Johnson felt that he was about to be attacked, but instead they lifted him up and feeded him in glory uh, and celebrated his win against, and this is in the Soviet Union during the height of the Cold War, and they celebrated this black athlete from the United States, which helped break barriers across the world when this occurred. Uh, and so he is, the story of legend. Um, he is the ultimate Olympic booster because he knows what it means and he knows what it can do. Uh, and by his example, uh, we can all strive to be faster, higher, stronger, and live the ideals of integrity and a life full of purpose and overcoming difficulties. Uh, and so I'm just happy that we're elevating him on this very, very sad day Los Angeles has lost a hero, uh, and we're all better for uh, him coming to council all those times and speaking and uh, supporting our efforts. Uh, and uh, so, Rayford Johnson, thank you for all you've done. Um, God bless your family, and may you rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Farrell. So where we will adjourn um, in memory of Rayford Johnson in today's meeting. So if there are any, any other adjournment, adjourning motions? Okay, seeing none, our meeting is adjourned. Thank you. let that be a reason that you don't cast a ballot because you're not ready. Just vote for the things that you're ready for and cast a ballot. Have something to say about the things that are important to you. Sean, I imagine you're already ready right now. <laughs> I've done a little bit of research, but not, not as much as I should, I'd say. So what are the, what are the areas in an election that, are, that you are most interested in? I mean, are you looking at the national scale or are you, as to Sarah spoke, all of the